Hey, Late Fees Besties! The No More Late Fees podcast is now available on Patreon. Subscribe to receive exclusive content, including Ask Me Anythings, playlists, live streams, bonus clips, and more. Check us out at patreon.com forward slash no more late fees. Welcome to the No More Late Fees podcast. I'm Danielle. And I'm Jackie. And we're just two best friends, next blockbuster employees, rewatching some of our favorite movies from the late 90s and early 2000s. So excited this week, Jackie, because we have our wonderful guest, Lindley Key, is here with us. Yes, welcome. Thank, Thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, of course. I'm, I'm, we're super excited. <laughs> <laughs> We figured since Lindley was going to be here on the show this week, we would do one of her favorite movies, The Mummy from 1999. So we're super stoked about that, not only because it's Lindley's favorite and she gets to be on the show, but because we are huge Brendan Fraser fans on the show. We stan him. So this is this is our second Brendan Fraser movie, technically, because we did Now and Then, and he made Mm -hmm. a cool cameo in that one. So oh man, I forgot about that movie. I need to go rewatch that one. (laughs) (laughs) It's a good rewatch, honestly. So the mummy is about pretty much a bunch of white people going where they shouldn't go and unleashing. (laughs) That's the perfect description of this movie. Unleashing an ancient old mummy who's been punished for trying to get his freak on with the Pharaoh's <laughs> girl. I think that's the best description of the mummy I could give. Yep. They, they should have just re-write. put that on the box. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Some movie stars, Brendan Fraser, Rachel Weiss, John Hanna, Arnold Vosloo, Oded Fair, and Eric Avari. <sighs> Oh, dead. <laughs> oh, he's oh, dead. Oh. <laughs> the man is a, a now oh. he is a silver fox. Ooh. I Ooh. <laughs> really when you, just thinking about it. <laughs> if you ask, like, do I want him? I would say, which decade? All of them. I want all of him. I'm not picky. Nope. The movie was directed by Stephen Summers, and you can watch it on HBO Max. Jackie, was it on Apple at all? I own it on iTunes as per usual. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but before we dive in, let's get into our ratings rewind. So you know the drill. Before we get into the movie, we'll reveal the rating our Y2K versions of ourselves would give. Then at the end, we'll see if our current selves agree with our initial rating. Our scale consists of would buy it, would buy it again, the best would play on repeat, five day rental, would watch again, two day rental. Okay. But nothing to write home about and same day rental dumpster fire (laughs) trash. (laughs) All right. Going around any feelings. (laughs) Savage. And I love it. (laughs) All right, Lindley. What would your Y2K version of yourself say this movie? What's your rating? Without a doubt, would buy it, would buy I'm it again. shocked. <laughs> I know. What a surprise. <laughs> I Jackie. definitely don't have a picture of these two from the movie on my body right now. <laughs> I don't like this movie at all. They're so close to your heart. They leak they right onto your literally shirt. Literally very close. <laughs> and how about you, Jackie? Same. Would buy it, would buy it again. I love, I loved this movie. I, I did not remember a thing. Now, let me preface that I do remember <laughs> that I love the movie. So I personally would give it a five-day rental, not would buy it because I didn't buy it and I didn't watch it a lot. I just know that I saw every iteration of it after. I just don't recall. And this is not anything against the mummy because I really don't remember most things in life. And it's a surprise that we could do a podcast at all. <laughs> 
Okay, let's get into it. We open on ancient Egypt. They're working to build the Sphinx. And they show <laughs> they show the city of Thebes. And we are introduced to Imhotep, who is the Pharaoh's high priest and keeper of the dead. The Pharaoh's mistress is Anaxanamun. And they meet up in secret because they are having a love affair. <laughs> I never get sound effects. I want Lindley all the time. She's my hype man. <laughs> Hire me. I'm here all day. <laughs> and so in their secret meetup, uh, Anax and Amun has very beautiful gold body paint with some like black details on it. And Imhotep <laughs> grabs her arm as they're talking and then the guards rush in he's able to hide but then the pharaoh comes in and sees her body paint is smeared which means she's been touched by another man mm. and he is she none too pleased like, she could have just like brushed up against a wall yeah, yeah. <laughs> be like oh no i tripped and i just rubbed up against the wall this doesn't mean anybody touched me like this thing comes off like with air yeah apparently she only had like a loin cloth and if some jewelry, but everything else was body paint on the actress. Oh. And it took like hours to apply. I, I couldn't even imagine. It's kind of like um, oh, Rebecca and Romaine then, in X-Men movie having to go. Yes. yes. And then in an interview with Arnold, who plays Umotep, he said, they're all waiting for the actress who plays a Nox and a Moon to come in. And in walks Brendan Fraser, head to toe, same body paint. <laughs> no. <laughs> And surprise no. everyone. Yep. And, and he wasn't supposed to be on set that day. No. So that I want that on a sweatshirt. <laughs> right. <laughs> and according to Brendan, he said Arnold's face was the funniest shit I ever saw. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. The only thing that obviously bothered me about this movie was just like pretty much any movie that they set in Egypt from the dawn of time for Hollywood there's very there's either none or very little of actual African people black mm -hmm. people in the movie yeah you're taking place in the continent of Africa it wasn't I think until the pharaoh's men that I saw any people of color and then most of the cast that were playing these characters were not people of color or if they were they weren't accurate so yeah. that was annoying but and I want and I want to say like oh that was just in the 90s but then you have movies like the um the, the Exodus movie that yes. Aloha, Gods of Egypt that came out recently which was yeah. terrible so yes. um <laughs> they're all white people mm -hmm. yeah at this point, it's just like ridiculous. I really don't understand the whole process. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, other than that, I would say that was triggering, but it is what it is. We knew what we were getting into. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hollywood, they'll never <laughs> learn. No, no, not so much. So the Pharaoh turns to confront um, Imhotep and... Anax and Amun stabs him in the back, and then they just take turns stabbing the pharaoh. Good yeah, for her. It was very aggressive. Like it really was. <laughs> like there was no blood shown. Like it, it, it was a requirement of the studio that it, no gore. Mm -hmm. So it was all like in shadow, but still but, very effective. Yeah. Yes. Kind of like Alfred Hitchcock. I think some of the scariest and some yep. of the best horror movies of all time. You don't really see the gore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so Anaxanamun tells Imhotep to run because he's the only one who can resurrect her. And he vows she will live again as the guards kind of haul him off. She then kills herself. And so Imhotep steals her body and tra travels to Hamanoptra, which is the city of the dead. And he takes the Black Book of the Dead to its holy resting place. The organs are placed in five separate jars. And wispy dementors come out of I 
I can't unsee that now. They mm-hmm. are Dementors. They are. <laughs> it's kind of fitting. <laughs> He's performing the spell. Anaxinamun's soul comes back from the dead, but then the Pharaoh's bodyguards run in and stop him before the ritual is complete. And she had one angry soul yeah. when yeah. it was not completed. <laughs> I mean, considering that the CGI was from that time period, I still think the movie holds up pretty well with the effects. It's mm. not, I mean, it's, I there's some parts where it's like clearly where I'm like, oh God. Imhotep's priests are mummified alive, which is, I didn't really remember that scene, but watching it last night, it was horrifying. Yeah, that, that was a horrible so way to much die. as a kid. Especially when the the scarabs are like, just like, oh, we're going to leave these here for you, buddy. Have fun. Yes. So oh. Imhotep is condemned to endure the hum die. So they cut out his tongue, wrap him up while he's still alive and place him in a sarcophagus full of scarabs. And apparently in a deleted scene, the hum die was explained in more detail and it was essentially... He was condemned to the scarabs eating him and then him eating the scarabs back and forth forever. Oh, that makes so much more sense than just, oh, here's a curse that if he's ever woken, well, it'll be bad for the earth. So yeah. it re- like without that explanation, it doesn't make sense. Like we're going to curse you. Yeah. And the curse is, it's really a curse on all of us if you ever wake up. Exactly. <laughs> I feel like he has a right to be angry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's, if he's, he's just pissed. being eaten alive for eternity, essentially. Yeah. And they show little key, which is actually a puzzle box, locking him into the sarcophagus and then also locking the book of the dead. The exposition that's given is he was to remain sealed inside his sarcophagus and be in dead for all of eternity. The Magi would never allow him to be released for he would arise a walking disease, a plague upon mankind, an unholy flesh eater with the strength of ages, power over the sands and the glory of invincibility. Cue credits. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> So now we are in Hamanoptera in 1923, and it's a war over the land, essentially. And I can't figure out, according to the subtitles, which I have on all the time because I am now an old person, Brendan Fraser speaking French. So I thought always thought it was British forces, but now I'm thinking maybe it was French? I think it's supposed to be the French Foreign Legion, yeah. which you if you can't really think too much about because from what I've seen, that doesn't really make sense as far as accurate history timeline. But, you know, this is a movie where None dead people this- come back to life. So <laughs> yeah. yes. H- historical <laughs> accuracy of this movie does not really exist that much Mm -hmm. although they did get egyptologist yeah they got one to come on set to to make sure that the dialect of um, the egyptian was correct when they were speaking it i will say the attention to detail in this movie is fantastic like the costuming was great Mm -hmm. and then they had these huge elaborate sets and from what i've read most of it was pretty accurate they took some liberties in the storytelling but I was really really impressed then and now with the whole production they really do especially like looking at the fine details Mm -hmm. we're talking about the scene with the uh priest and Imhotep being mummified Mm -hmm. you see some of the people doing the mummifying wearing uh Anubis heads Mm -hmm. because Anubis is the god of the dead I'm looking at you, 2017 mummy movie. You said that Set was the god of the dead. <laughs> Not true. <laughs> Doesn't make sense that there would be an army of Anubis, uh, as far as I know. <laughs> and so the leader of the French Legion kind of sees the vast army they're up against and pieces out. And then we see Rick played by Brendan Fraser 
on screen and his little buddy Benny says, <laughs> looks like you just got promoted. <laughs> <laughs> and then Benny takes off. <laughs> yeah. He, Benny is Big not a ride nope. or die. He at is all. not. Nope. And apparently they built this set inside a dormant volcano. What? Yeah. That's yeah. so cool. They, Whoa. they, yeah. So that's when you see the magi up on the hill, they're like on the rim of the volcano, and then the set is inside the volcano. I would have needed major compensation if I was filming there. Like, <laughs> <laughs> are Dormant. we sure this is okay? <laughs> Lava free. Yeah. Okay. Is me. it hot because we're in the desert, or is it hot because the volcano is active? <laughs> are we about to be barbecued? Yes. That is so, very scary. There's more exposition explaining that for 3,000 years, the Magi have looked over Hamanatra to make sure that no one found the city of the dead. Eventually, what scared the other guys was that whole scene with Brendan Fraser and they, um, them seeing the artifact and knowing that it was haunted, I guess, or whatever. It scared them. Benny then appears and runs inside some sort of door and like shuts the door on Rick solidifying that he's a thing for himself or <laughs> <laughs> he's a very like me and only me mindset yeah Rick is kind of retreating further and further into Hamanoptera and then the horses get spooked and take off and all of a sudden there's like this weird sand ghost <laughs> batting at rick that never shows up again in the no. entire yeah. movie yeah. It's, like, super weird. it's gonna be really cool <laughs> yes. i never understood that because it was like was that trying to keep him away and if so why didn't it come back later to try to keep them away from coming into when they were racing the, the Americans. Yeah. It's for yeah. the trailer. It was just for the trailer. <laughs> 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 like, this is, people are going to see this. They're going to think it's really cool. Is it going to show up in the movie again? No, but it'll <laughs> get butts and seats. Yes. <laughs> it'll look good on the poster. <laughs> now we are three years later and we see Evie, our girl. I loved how they did her eyebrows so very They're so much. thin so thin and it's so much of the time like she just everything head to toe she looked amazing it was perfect and I feel like it's the first time I've introduced to Rachel Weiss as an actress same yeah so we see Evie she is reshelving books in this very established <laughs> library it seems to have very important old dusty books she was um, getting her bell on for sure she was and that uh, makes so much sense <laughs> my favorite character bell's my favorite princess i have a tight <laughs> <laughs> that is my aesthetic to a t <laughs> and i always related to evie as well because i was that book nerd and Ever since introduction in um, fourth grade to Egypt, where we carved our own cartouches out of plaster, I was always fascinated and I low-key wanted to learn or teach myself hieroglyphics. Like I was in it. And so just that paired with like, she's, she's kind of nerdy and she loves Egypt too. I was all about Evie. And so, and just being kind of clumsy and all of that. So we see Evie shelving these books on a ladder. She, she tries to lean to place a book on another shelf. And so then she's like tiptoeing with the ladder. <laughs> that and was then... so scary. Just watching her do that. I was like, <laughs> there's no fucking way. I know I would have just face planted a hundred percent. And so then she ends up knocking all of these bookshelves down and they're probably a good 12 feet high mm -hmm. completely in like an oval around the room so it's just dominoes bookshelf after bookshelf. you know that was a we have one take yep yeah get this shot <laughs> if we don't do this now 
Oh gosh, the oh, if they had to do that more than once, I can't imagine what the props <laughs> department must yeah. have been feeling. They were really excited that they were able to get it in one shot. So thank God. Yes. Then we see, I don't need, I don't know if he has a name. I call him the curator. <laughs> Let me check. I think it's Terrence okay. Bay. It's Dr. Terrence yeah, Bay. Yeah, Terrence Bay. Terrence, okay. okay. I know that <laughs> Super Yaki did a, this is where this comes from, from Super Yaki. They did a whole mummy collection and they have a kind of like museum of antiquity shirt. It said director Terrence Bay. I was like, is that, is that the dude with like the white beard? <laughs> Am I just now realizing that's his name? <laughs> so we see Dr. Terrence Bay run in compare Evie to the plagues (laughs) (laughs) foreshadowing (laughs) and he's kind of like why do I keep you around apparently she's fairly clumsy seems like stuff like this happens often and he says I only employ you because your mother and father were major donors type thing doing them a favor even though they have since passed it seems God rest their souls. <laughs> and Evie says, well, you do keep me around because I could read and write Egyptian and decipher hieroglyphics. So she- And heretic. Yes. <laughs> list, list those I'm skills, so- girl. No, I really like that she she stood up for herself because so mm-hmm. many women at that time, I couldn't, couldn't even imagine like mm-hmm. what she was doing a lot. Mm-hmm. We see her in what I- assume is like an antiquities room just lots of different artifacts and statues and things and then her brother Jonathan is like chilling (laughs) in a it's not even a sarcophagus it's more like a crypt so creepy there's no way you could like literally that yeah he's just literally (laughs) chilling with the skeleton and playing with it and scaring Evie with it And so she's kind of chiding him, but you see, even though like he's kind of obnoxious, he he really cares for her and she really cares for him. And they have a very sweet relationship. Yeah, they do. She does say she was rejected by the Benbridge scholars again for lack of experience in the field. More foreshadowing. Just code (laughs) that they wanted it to be a, a boys club. Poor Evie. Then Jonathan says, oh, I found you a trinket. And gives her this little, it's like an octagonal box, but it's like a puzzle box. She kind of has to figure it out. Seems like she's either reading it or doing something with it and she's able to open it. And there's a map inside. She's very excited, goes to show her Dr. Terrence. Yep. And he proceeds to light it on fire. Yeah, As one does. trying to be very <laughs> sneaky. He tried to be sneaky about it yeah. and say, oh, it's an accident. Like, oh, good heavens. How did that happen? <laughs> and then they're oh, like, well, why did you do this? Like, or how do- it's burning. And he was like, it's for the best. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how do you not? And, and he tells them, stay out of grown folk business. Don't <laughs> try to go there. Yep. Thank you. And goodbye. Evie's not convinced. No. So, In one ear, out the other. Yep. Yes. Come to find out Jonathan did not just happen upon this trinket. He nope. stole it. Of course. From a drunk dude at the bar, aka Rick. <laughs> <laughs> so somehow they figure out Rick's in prison and they go to get Rick out of prison. And I really love this scene. Like the whole interaction, how he like just grabs her and kisses her and tells her, get me the hell out of here. Yeah. Even though it's like, oh, consent, but it's like. But I do like, I was a little like, oh my God, the consent thing at first. But later on, he does explain the reason why he did it. It's not that great, but he thought he was going to die. And yeah. that was, he's like, there's a pretty girl. I might as well get what I can get. He yep. was shooting his shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not the, it wasn't the best shot, but no. a shot nonetheless. Still but no and consent. you can tell their personalities just from that like small interaction. Like you've got, she's like invested on the mission. She's like, I'm here for knowledge. He's like, you know, the quirky. Like you swear <laughs> every damn day. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's so good. He pretty much tells me, "Get me the hell out of here," if you want to know. Yeah. <laughs> 
And apparently today is hanging day. <laughs> they just happened to show up on hanging day. Both in the movie and on set. Aww. Yes. Because Brendan was legitimately almost killed. This is my Vigo Mortensen broke his toe in Lord of the Rings moment. Every time it pops up on screen, I'm like, did you know he almost died here? <laughs> like, he, they I think they actually had to resuscitate him, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, 18 oh. seconds, am I wrong? Yeah, I think it was that amount before they oh, could get gosh. him back. But like, for me, that's a day a stunt double can play with that. Thank <laughs> you. I'm not playing with that. Nope. My ancestors wouldn't even want me to play with that. So you definitely <laughs> can go get that stunt double. Yep. Yeah, they're, yeah, just no. That would have, and then Rachel Weiss even said just watching that was traumatic for her. Just the mm -hmm. experience of him almost dying and everything, which I totally get. That's crazy. Somebody That's got terrifying. fired that day. Who yes. did they? So <laughs> fired. I hope they got insurance. Yep. <laughs> So while Rick is hanging, Evie and the warden are just having a casual conversation, negotiating the fees for his release. And they finally agree the warden can have 25% of whatever they find in Hominoptra. And so they cut Rick down and we are on our way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we are getting onto a boat now. And this and is my favorite scene because he clean. <laughs> My boy oh. took a bath. Yeah. I wrote, he looked, he looked eight year old nice. Lindley was like, What is this new feeling I'm feeling? Yeah. I feel some tingles, but I can't say where. <laughs> I did write Rick cleans up real nice. <laughs> real nice. Real nice. And our and our girl, she noticed too. Mm -hmm. Stopped dead yep. in her tracks when she saw him. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. He's a gentleman too, because although they had some bickering, he does take her suitcase. And I like a man yeah. who could carry my shit. <laughs> we we stand a himbo. Yes. We and Rick O'Connell, <laughs> Brendan Fraser is the himbo king. <laughs> <laughs> it cuts to a quick shot of the Magi in a canoe. Uh, <laughs> These guys are with the Gary Hook cool. Magi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're always watching. <laughs> I always and feel like Magi is watching, watching me. <laughs> Mommy, the musical coming to Broadway this October. <laughs> Jonathan is gambling. Jonathan's loose lips sinking. Loose chips. lips. <laughs> yeah. Literally. 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 <laughs> so Jonathan's just out here telling everyone their business oh yeah we're just going to hominoptra hmm. we'll race you there see you there hmm. <laughs> so then we see this very candid conversation between rick and evie just bantering back and forth totally rick and evie <laughs> i ship it i ship it so hard <laughs> it was shipping shipping on a ship Yes. Before shipping was a thing yes. before Tumblr came along. <laughs> Evie kind of goes back to her room and we realize Benny is a stowaway just hiding behind some crates. <laughs> but he's not really a stowaway because the Americans hired him. So why don't I don't know why he's hiding behind crates. I think he was hiding from Rick. Maybe he didn't expect Rick to be on the ship. I think that's what it was. So, so he was just he taking his like nightly stroll and then was like, <laughs> shit, shit, Rick. Yes. And then <laughs> hid in the corner. Yeah. I think that's, that's exactly what happened. That is the only <laughs> option I can think of. <laughs> <laughs> like, la la la. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> but he didn't hide well. And no, he didn't. Absolutely not. He got a one way ticket to the ocean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no <Four>. ticket. <laughs> After Rick throws Benny overboard he sees wet footprints and so he's like mm, something's not right something's that was a little Benny. bit off Evie is in her cabin trying to read and do her research but all <laughs> she's thinking about is that kiss mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
<laughs> that non-consensual kiss. She's yes. got Rick, and, Rick on the lips and in the mind. <laughs> You're right. I, mean, I do love the sound effects, Jackie. Lindsay, right? you're tired. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, I don't blame her. No, no, Seems absolutely not. <laughs> she walks by a mirror and kind of drops her book and you see magi behind her like lady you got something we need o'connell comes into the the cabin guns blazing gonna (laughs) save the day save the lady swoon (laughs) (laughs) and so he kind of rescues evie she drops the key jonathan comes bumbling into the cabin but there's one part of that scene that I did like, like he comes to save her, but she does knock she that takes guy. A, yeah. She takes the candlestick, candlestick to the and, eye and she yes. takes care of business while he's like fighting someone else at the time too. So yeah. I did like that, that she she's not a damsel in distress. Not at all. Exactly. Not in the least. Yes. And that was so really, really refreshing at the time, not just in like the action and horror genres, but just in general, it's so nice to see this damsel character get given so much more of a personality. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like she was intelligent. She's the real catalyst of the plot. Yes, she's the actual I, main character. Yes, mm-hmm. in my mind, and I will make this argument till kingdom come. Evelyn is the true hero of the mummy. Yes, because absolutely. the muscle. Evelyn is the hero. Yeah. Yes. And she didn't have to be some buff gun toting woman Mm-mm. to do it either. Like she exactly. could still be feminine, but also intelligent, a full rounded woman. You're right. I, and I don't nerd. think they don't talk about her enough. Yeah. <laughs> full on nerd. Love a nerd. This, this is an <laughs> Evelyn Carnahan appreciation zone right here. It <laughs> is. <laughs> and Jonathan and the Magi's fight. And the Magi are a group of people, not just one person. So Jonathan and and one of the Magi are fighting over the key. Knock a candle over. So the boat's on fire now. Everyone. That boat lit up real quick too. It did. (laughs) Everyone. Well, not everyone. All the characters that are going to have roles continuing (laughs) forward. All the named characters. Exactly. Get off the ship. Rick and crew ends up on one bank. Benny and the Americans end up on the other and so then there's this banter about like Benny, like, ha ha, we got all the horses. And then Rick's like, you're on the wrong, wrong side, side of the river. <laughs> Iconic. <laughs> Line. <laughs> and Evelyn's nightgown ended up being transparent after being in the water. So they had to like digitally paint the white back on in post-production. So that the rating oh. would still stay PG-13. I guess they didn't learn from the Titanic because they did a mm. lot of work to make sure Rose's dress stayed absolutely non seed through through all the mm-hmm. water scenes. Oh, wow. <sighs> well, poor Rachel. You live, you learn. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> They happen upon, it looks like, just this little town on their way to Hamanoptra. And so Evie gets a makeover. And this is when Rick realizes. She's making me tingle in places too. (laughs) (laughs) It's the word tingle. (laughs) She's in like this black, more traditional dress with a headpiece and kind of a... uh, peekaboo of her eyes yeah Yeah. yes the veil and it's gorgeous like that is one of the scenes that stands out y2k jackie is just that scene where she's revealed and gorgeous (laughs) (laughs) also get you a man who looks at you the way that rick looks at evie yes Yes. (laughs) or oh dead either rise in singleness (laughs) at the same time they're getting some camels so that they can uh, continue traveling to to Hamanoptra those camels were going faster than I I've never seen camels Mm -hmm. go that fast 
I don't have much camel experience. <laughs> I mean, every movie I've ever seen with camels, it's pretty slow. I've never seen them like racing like that. You so. mean you both aren't camel experts? No. <laughs> Why am I here then? <laughs> that was the moment that Lindley learned that we are not the people. What have I signed up for? Pond, you bamboo. <laughs> excited to talk about camel <laughs> <laughs> and so we see they kind of arrive at the same time the americans do and the bet is still on that who can arrive first to hominoptera so then it, it, it's a flat out race but uh evie kind of knows her way around a camel and so she's like flying past everybody everyone even <laughs> hashtag girl boss camel yes. boss <laughs> and I love the support her brother gives he's like go Evie go yes. <laughs> we love it oh and I missed they they arrive at just before sunrise and so they're all waiting and they're kind of like what are we waiting for and then Rick's like you'll see and as the sun rises it reveals the location of Hominoptera which I also really love that scene too and Benny's playing dirty he's like hitting Rick with his <laughs> horse whip like get out of here Benny yeah and so then he just gets pulled to the dust <laughs> mm-hmm. Eat. yep oh, so they get to the site everybody's mm-hmm. pulling up camp the Americans have their stuff fancy stuff and Evie has these wonderful mirrors um, she says they're ancient mirrors. Rick calls them old and she knows all the tricks and she's on, on another side of not where the Americans are. They have no idea what she's doing, but you know, she, she's got tricks up her sleeves and she knows a little bit more than everybody thinks. So they're able to get in to a different part of the um, underground <laughs> temple, I guess you would call it. Yeah. 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 And he brings her a jig kit. Yeah, he, he stole did. it, but also, <laughs> oh, it's the gesture that counts. They all blend oh. together. All the Americans blend together for me. And then there's the British guy that wears the fez that actually knows what he's talking about. That who was British also- guy I know from the Richie Rich movie. He's yes. Cadbury. Yes. And, <laughs> and it was so weird seeing Cadbury as a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was used to him being a jerk because he was a jerk when we watched the Titanic. He was in that movie That's as well. Right. <laughs> he had a mustache. Yes. <laughs> he was definitely a jerk. And I was watching a YouTube video where they were talking about why, even though the Americans were douchebags, pretty much that they had such a prominent role in the movie and why we had to start to end up liking them throughout the course of the movie, even though they were adversaries in the beginning. Yes, I saw that too. You did, right. Like, so because eventually we had to have, just like in a horror movie, you have to have some ties to the characters that are going to be slaughtered (laughs) pretty much Mm -hmm. so that you care that they're dying and they're not just like, kind of like props in the background and I was like oh my god I never thought about that so true there's so many layers to this (laughs) so many movies like an onion (laughs) a blooming onion because it's delicious (laughs) (laughs) the the blooming onion of cinema Let let us market this movie. Yes, we've done a great <laughs> job. Call us. Fuck around and find out. Blooming onion of the movies. Perfect. Yes, we see Evie setting up all these different mirrors, and then she's like, "Let there be light," and they all zigzaggy and light up the whole room. And you kind of hear scarabs and hear voices. So, you know, like things are happening. <laughs> Shit is creepy. This would have been the time I would have been like, I'm out. Like, you wouldn't have been there to, to begin with. You write about that. You're damn right. I would have never, you want me to go to the desert? Mm. Hard pass. The Americans, I guess, find another way in and they kind of meet in the middle underground and there's lots of gun pointing. Because masculinity. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when in doubt, 
point a gun. Yes. yes. There's lots of gun pointing and arguing and fighting over who th- found, because they are at the feet of Anubis, the statue of Anubis. And so arguing who gets to dig there. And Evie notices that there's like a, a slit in the ground. And so she's like, that's okay. We'll go f- dig somewhere else. Yeah. The Brains over she, brawn. The way that she deescalated, I feel mm-hmm. like a lot of people in this country could learn from Evie. She just mm-hmm. calmly talks yep. like boys let's put our guns down. It's okay. We need to like, learn to share. Yes. yes. <laughs> and she pretty much was just smarter than all the idiot boys and was yep. able to get what she needs to get done without any violence. Women. Now it's done. Which in another deleted scene, I don't know if it's a deleted scene or it may have been in the novelization of the movie. When they ar- arrived in Hominoptera, there was another sand army face ghosty thing <gasps> it trying wasn't to... just for the trailer <laughs> 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 trying to keep them out and like that's what created that split in the oh. floor oh nice and so they go i guess she knows third basement level <laughs> i don't know <laughs> She's going Secret for the levels sales rack. unlocked. She is. <laughs> <laughs> so she decides we'll just dig up instead of down and we'll we'll do it that way. And while all of this is going on, the warden has gone off on his own and he is kind of wandering, crawling, and then wandering around. And he sees what he thinks are like jewels carved into scarabs on a wall. So he's tying them off Those like jewels. I mean, they are not. We've all learned from Aladdin. Don't <laughs> touch the other shit. Uh-uh. <laughs> oh, and the Americans also have essentially probably slaves that come with them yeah. uh, to do all of the digging and the dirty work and stuff. Yeah. And so they're they they notice that there's different panels on the base of Anubis, and so they're making them pry off one of the panels. And then they get acid to the face. Yeah. I I didn't like how their scholar guy, professor, whoever that guy's, mm-hmm. um, he was just like, his tone of voice was so rude and disgusting to the yeah, help, helpers. Awful. I don't know. They probably were just locals that he paid very little mm-hmm. to do not to, to do all the work, but mm-hmm. like, no, I don't need to know the language you're speaking to know you're a dick and you need yeah. to stop being so mean to yeah. those poor people. Didn't, spoiler alert, didn't feel bad when he, uh, Imhotep got to him. <laughs> yeah. like, no, nah, you have that coming. So. <laughs> dry down to the bones. <laughs> kind of shows Jonathan using tools to golf. He's just like hit he's rocks. Just a mess. A yeah, mess. Well, while Evie and Rick are kind of discussing things and he hits Mummification her- 101. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Stick something up your nose, scramble things out of it, and then rip it all out through your nostrils. I was love it. So <laughs> disgusted. But thanks, Evie. <laughs> and so Jonathan hits a rock and somehow finds this sarcophagus that drops from the ceiling so they're like jackpot (laughs) (laughs) and at the same time they're doing that the americans find a chest and uh the warden uh starts to regret his decisions because (laughs) (laughs) the scarabs are actually just hibernating and they come out and apparently they burrow in your skin and eat you from the inside out. Uh, is what it as seems. one does. But in this scene, <laughs> apparently the actor who was, this was his first role. He was a stand-up comedian. The mm-hmm. one that played the warden. Um, he's hilarious, by the way. He's in a movie. I think it's called The Infidel that I saw like a little while back. Oh. He's hilarious. He did a fantastic job. I really enjoyed his character in that. Like, I mean, he was a jerk and got what it was coming to him, but like mm-hmm. he his, did a good job. Yeah. His name in real life is um Ahmed Dajali. 
if I'm saying that right. So apparently for whatever reason, he didn't wear underwear that day. What? (laughs) And so as he's scrambling with the scarab under the skin, um, there are some frames where if you slow it down enough, you see his um, thing fly out of his pants. <gasps> he pulled I a wild, wild west. He did. <laughs> I don't know if you did send me that. Oh, I think you sent me something else. Oh, I found it. Well, because I have to be the investigative reporter. I'm like, well, I need proof. <laughs> not me. Not me. <laughs> Going to HBO Max on my phone. So like- there is a Reddit that has the slowed down video so you can see exactly oh and so i have confirmation <laughs> it's <is> accurate <laughs> oh my oh god no. wait they didn't catch it uh-uh. so it's in the- oh uh-huh oh no <laughs> so maybe now with streaming and stuff maybe they were able to do something but it, i mean there there's hard evidence <laughs> the that- 90s yeah the 90s and that's on so that happened first of all why would you not wear underwear because like obviously they're shooting in the desert and there were so many cases of of like critters they use a lot of live critters for the movie itself like spiders and stuff like that nope, a lot no, of, no, 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 <laughs> there no, were no, spiders no. there were snakes there were scorpions and a ton of the the cast and staff and every in the crew were getting airlifted to the hospital because they were getting bites and stabs from these animals so if you know this is happening why would you say this is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna get dressed but not put any underwear on because it's hot outside i'm protecting my jewels (laughs) and letting them ball sweat before i like some critter to crawl up and up and down my pina you know Do you want them to be guarded or do you want them to let them breathe? <laughs> the choice is yours. They both come with risks. Uh, he, uh, he took it. <sighs> Getting back to the story. I can't. I can't. This, this is good. This is going to keep me awake at night. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Evie says who would bury someone at the at the base of Anubis is either someone of great importance or someone who was very yeah, not. Naughty. <laughs> <laughs> um, Someone who didn't wear underwear. <laughs> exactly. <Yep. laughs> and so she realizes that the little puzzle box key fits in the sarcophagus and thinks, I have an idea. Let's open this baby up and see what's happening. <laughs> so now we could go back to the beginning when I said this movie is because white people were in places and doing shit that they shouldn't have. <laughs> Not <Tragic>. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yep. oh, so the Americans find this box and I think that's when they found found the chest. He's like reading the those who open the chest will be cursed. Yes. All Thank that you. good stuff. They find yeah. the jars. And they each take one. Because white people. Yes. yes. <laughs> yep. Take it, taking stuff that isn't there since yes. the dawn of time. Yeah. yeah. Just greed in general. Mm-hmm. Just absolute pure greed. Gross. But the Magi show up and they're they're warning them to leave. And the Americans are like, no, we want the gold and you're not gonna get to it before us or something very I feel American. like the magi <laughs> I feel like the magi were way too kind yeah Yeah. and I feel like they should have either just been upfront and said look this shit haunted yeah Mm -hmm. like they were just like leave leave this place or die you have a day get to get your shit together you know like no (laughs) they could have just like hey listen buddy um there's there's a curse on this place and if you just somehow awaken this mummy he's gonna it's it's just not gonna be a good scene not a vibe so if yeah. you could just please uh get out yeah. <laughs> I really appreciate it maybe if Ardeth Bay you know use that approach yeah maybe things would have worked out which yeah. I love the fact that Odette Fair's character his name is Ardeth Bay 
which in the 1932 original mummy movie with Boris Karloff, that is actually Imhotep's alias. Oh, Imhotep nice. is already like walking around. He's resurrected and he's walking around trying to find someone to replace his lady love because his lady love died and he got in trouble trying to resurrect her. <laughs> so he uses the al- alias Artifay when he's interacting with the different characters. So I do love that. Stephen Summers is clearly a big fan of the classic monster movies. Yeah. You can see that in the Mummy. You can see it in Ben Helsing. And I, I just love that little that little homage to the original Mummy I movie. I love that. I didn't even know that. That's super cool. And I love that he, as an, a, the director, Stephen Summers, loved Odette. Like, loved him yes. so much because his character was essentially supposed to die, but he decided to resurrect him and keep nope. him in. Bring him back for the mummy. How did he get to London? We don't know. We don't know. (laughs) He was still alive and he got to be in the mummy returns and, and he, they were supposed to have full tattoos of the mad giant. He decided not to because Oded was too beautiful to cover that wonderful face. And thank you. And Y2K Danielle was very appreciative of that. Thank you. And Ardith Bay is an anagram for death by raw. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Wait, hold on a second. I'm having an epiphany. Oh. If the the guy's name, the the curator, mm-hmm. he's Terrence Bay, and we know later in the movie that he's got something to do with the Magi. Uh-huh. He's Terrence Bay. That's Ardith Bay. Are they meant to be brothers or like or family? Son? Father hmm. son probably they did I mean it seems like you're in this group by family so I wouldn't be surprised Mm -hmm. if they were related how did we not get how did we not figure this stuff out (laughs) (laughs) but we're figuring it out so every one of you guys listening don't have to think too hard about it you're welcome (laughs) later that evening you see Evie is drunk the warden brought some (laughs) good booze yeah, live it 1912. Yeah. Wait, didn't the warden die? Did we miss that part? Yeah, warden got got he got eaten up live, live. <laughs> without yeah. underwear. Without yeah, underwear. underwear, yeah. He did. And so Evie is now drunk and just kind of telling her whole life story. <laughs> <laughs> She's a chatty drunk. She says her father was a very famous explorer. And her mother was Egyptian. And that was actually Evelyn Carnahan is inspired by a real and rather significant person, Lady Evelyn Beauchamp, the daughter of the fifth Earl of Carnarvon, Carnarvon. <laughs> was present for the 1922 discovery of the tomb of um, King Tut. Nice. So it, it was kind of like thrown in there. Her little backstory was kind of meant to, to parallel that. And she very proudly proclaims, I am a librarian. (laughs) (laughs) It's such a good moment. She, it is. So Rick's kind of just sitting there, letting Evie be Evie, taking it all in. (laughs) And then she goes in for a kiss, but then passes out just short of a kiss. And he's like, well, I guess then they're outside doing this. And this is when the Americans like open the chest and Benny pieces out. Why did they wait uh, so long? I guess they were, I guess they were digging a lot longer than just happening upon a, a, a sarcophagus. <laughs> yeah. And I think at the same, at the same time, that's when, uh, Evie, that, that's when they actually open. Yes. Open up, uh, and find the nice juicy mummy. The juicy mummy. <laughs> so this is at Blockbuster when we were transitioning from VHS to DVD. Mm -hmm. (laughs) oh no I worked in Boca and so we had a lot of 55 plus communities and we had so many angry older people coming Mm -hmm. in and literally like throwing DVDs on the counter and saying this DVD is broken (laughs) it's not filling up my entire screen because at that time, TV screens were four by three. And so <laughs> trying to explain to them, hey, guys, you're actually seeing more of the movie. That's why the bars are on the top and bottom. 
And so I used this scene. I went online in the very early ages of being able to Google images <laughs> and found this scene where it showed the widescreen version where you see Jonathan, Mummy, Rick, and Evie. And then the full screen version is just the Mummy, Rick, and Evie. Mm -hmm. And I printed them up and put them all over the place so that when people complain, I could say, see, look, see, there's a whole nother character here. When you get, <laughs> when it fills the screen, that character has gone. You're seeing more of the movie here, less of the movie here. So <laughs> wow. this scene is what I used to inform and educate people about what <laughs> God bless, wow. God bless your heart. Cause <laughs> yeah. I would have been like, you could talk to my manager, Jackie. <laughs> I'm like, hold on. Let me get my visual. <laughs> <laughs> like, please spot the difference between yes. these two pictures. <laughs> yes. When they open juicy mummy, he, he still got a lot of moisture. I, and Evie's like, well, that's not supposed to happen. She looks inside the lid of the sarcophagus and realizes this man was buried alive. These are fingernail marks. And then he is, I guess, laid there and etched uh, a warning, which I don't think I wrote down. And then the Americans also find the book of the dead. That's when they start finding the scarab skeletons and it's explained they can be dormant for a very long time and then reanimate. <laughs> yeah. That, then they um, figured out that's how the warden died. Correct. And then Evie decides it's a good idea to open the book of the dead. And okay. The part about this that drives me insane is people don't read in their head anymore. Why were you reading out loud? Because no. <laughs> maybe she was reading to Rick. Rick can't understand that shit. He don't care. I don't think he cares. <laughs> I would have been like, what's the translation? Not I, read the I words. literally said, read to yourself, Evie. Yes. <laughs> and I just think it's, it was kind of annoying that the really mean guy actually knew more than she did and that mm. she's so smart. It's kind of unbelievable. She's so smart in everything else that she does. Mm -hmm. And yes, I know we all make mistakes, but I just was like, it's hard for me to believe baby girl was going to do something this dumb. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think I think my my justification for it is Evie is a very logical person. So in her mind, the idea of a vengeful mummy coming back to life was so far fetched. But like, that's yeah. never going to happen. Yeah, I'm yeah. just going to read this. Nothing's going to happen because it's not realistic. It's not in the realm of possibilities. True. We're cool. <laughs> she was <laughs> wrong. Yeah. <laughs> we were but in fact know. not cool. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately locusts. A plague upon your city. All of that is happening. And like Danielle said, they used a lot of real animals. The British guy is just kind of lying there covered in locusts. Like, what have we done? <laughs> yeah. I'm glad he said we. He does call out <laughs> Evie. He's like, don't, you're not supposed to read from that book. And then everything happens. But I'm glad he took accountability that yes, you, sir, are a part of this problem. Mm hmm holding on to the book like it was the last bag of Doritos <laughs> in the house <laughs> the things that are important to Daniel <laughs> no, no shame whatsoever I completely understand that Doritos are very important they it's are the <laughs> they kind of run back into um the tomb area to get away from all the locusts Evie gets separated. There's a wall, very Indiana Jones in the last crusade that flips. Like she hits a special button, it flips. And she sees the American with glasses. His glasses have been knocked off his face. He can't see anything. Uh, much time. like Danielle after the mummy ride. Yes. <laughs> oh, it all comes back full circle. It's a low blow, Jackie. It's a low blow. I know I love you. <laughs> <laughs> and so the American looking for glasses, Emotep is out. Here he comes. He's looking for all of his organs. 
And Benny, he, Benny's, Benny's bitch ass steps on his fucking glasses. Yes. Yep. yep. Sorry, Benny. You You're deserve good. everything you get. Mm-hmm. Yep. So Amatep approaches American man and Evie finds him no eyes, no tongue. Which, why would he, t- okay, number one, why would he take the eyes from the American who has no, like, who has I, poor eyesight? I don't know if he knows that. I mean, yes, he's got these, like, godly feature, like, things happening, uh, out of worldly things. I think he just was like, you're the first body I can find. Yep. And I'm just taking what's yours. And it's I saw- just odd. <laughs> <laughs> I saw this a thing online and it explains so much so he takes the guy the he takes the eyes of a guy who needs glasses so it makes sense that when he sees rachel vice he's immediate like female shape a nox in a moon (laughs) don't look anything like patricia velasquez but you're a nox in a moon (laughs) it makes so much more sense it does that he's seeing a blurried vision (laughs) you got dark hair you're female dark hair lady silhouette my love (laughs) (laughs) you shall be mine Oh yeah. So Imhotep thinks Evie is Nox in the moon and is like, we'll be reunited, my love. He's as like, soon as I suck these other guys dry, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> and then he roars at Rick and then Rick, Rick roars, roars back. back. Which he does that twice in the movie. Yes, but each time it's so different. <laughs> the first time he can get away with the second time he's just like, uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> Then the Magi were pretty much like tried to warn you. But did they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I think if even if they had warned them, I, I felt like all of them would have been so much they Too wouldn't proud. have listened. Yeah, they wouldn't yeah. have listened. Yeah. But details are still important. Yeah. Yes. Facts. Um, <laughs> Benny's still roaming around and the mummy comes upon him. Imhotep comes upon him. <laughs> and so, so good. Benny just is covered. Benny is prepared. <laughs> He's got every, every religion, religion and deity under the sun. Every talisman you can think of. And he's just going through one by one. Like that didn't work. This didn't work. It, in the so is this your card? The, the, is the this your card? Yes. <laughs> so then he starts speaking in Hebrew and Imhotep's like, language of slaves. I got a job for you. <laughs> and Benny's like, okay (laughs) (laughs) whatever keeps me alive because i'm a coward yes (laughs) Imhotep also offers him gold in exchange for taking him to all the people who have the organ canisters which i wrote down the name of eventually jars thank you So then we see we are outside of Cairo. There is some sort of storm rolling in. Rick is trying to pack to leave. Evie is unpacking as Rick packs. He's like, "Go, go, go. Shit's hit the fan. Let's peace out. And Evie's like, no, we started this. We have to fix it. We're the reason it hit yes. the fan. <laughs> we, gotta, like, we have to clean up the fan. <laughs> Evie's like, I'm a hero, so I've got to do this. And Rick's like, I promise to take you out there and bring you back, but that's it. But then mm, she, she does look good. So maybe he'll stick around <laughs> a little longer. Uh, the first <laughs> fight is a couple. <laughs> <laughs> And then we see Jonathan and Rick and this older gentleman who is a pilot at the bar. He just came out of nowhere. Like, first of all, he He was walking with another lady who I'm, I don't know what that was. I would, I could infer (laughs) that maybe she was a lady of the night, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Um, But he keeps walking in these fountains, these mini Yeah, he's just, he reminds me a lot of the dad in Disney's Tarzan Yes. (gasps) Yes. <gasps> yes. The professor. Yeah. <laughs> and like that bumbling, like good hearted. Yeah. Willing to help, but just yeah. kind of oblivious. Yeah. He's just looking for he that. He really last wants adventure. to die. Yeah. He really does. Be like, My comrades all died in the war. I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still here. 
there. <laughs> the reason he goes to help is like, is that is there a lot of danger? Could I possibly die? <laughs> <laughs> They're all taking shots, drinking at the bar. Then we see Benny has found no eyes. Disguises. Yeah, he has the so mummy. The mu- yeah, the mummy but, has like a mask on. Yeah, but that's the only time we see the mask. And why disguise yourself if you know you already plucked that guy's eyeballs out? And why didn't you just suck him dry in Hamanoptera? I don't know why he waited so long, but I think he put the mask on because he probably didn't want the other people, the Americans, if he was, if they saw him to know that he he had to get to that room. Yeah. But as for how long he waited, I don't know. I do not know. (laughs) They stopped off in Paris and got a mask from his buddy, Eric, down at the opera house. You want to use this one? Yeah. Cover that up. Go have fun. And then we see the shots that they take down at the bar are actually blood. So yet another plague. Why did, why did the liquor turn to blood? I get water turning into blood because that's one of the plagues, but why did the liquor turn to blood? I think it was them realizing that the barkeep was was just giving him water, giving oh, them watering oh, down the drink. He was yes. cheating them. He's watering down the booze. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, mystery company layer. <laughs> <laughs> No wonder this isn't getting me drunk, and I'm having to buy like five shots. Yeah, there are screams. Benny's running out while Rick's running in, and there's <laughs> the first American mummified. And as Emotep comes out, he tries to kiss Evie and then her, I don't know if it's her cat, a cat, um, scares him away. The explanation is because cats are guardians of the underworld. Well, I was just like, our pod cats are going to save us. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We'll just keep them around. Yep. And then this is when we find out that Terrence is part of the Magi as well. If you couldn't tell from the map lighting scene, obviously he did that shit Such on purpose. Such a subtle. Right. Subtle, <laughs> that's, subtle. That's, that's when they realize he's going to raise a nox and a wound from the dead and he's chosen Evie as his sacrifice. And so she's now- the only lady on screen. Yes. <laughs> Anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Other than other than the, the scene where she gets- a, a new outfit in the desert and the lady of the night there's no more yeah. yeah yeah then there's an eclipse they lock evie in a room and have an american stand guard the way that that scene progressed though like you know rick was taken charge he mm-hmm. pretty much told the two americans because they know that they're going to come that the other um professor guy was a target and they needed to go get him they he's like you guys are gonna stay here stand guard and watch evie evie's like i ain't have none of this rick said <laughs> fuck that puts her over his shoulder throws mm-hmm. her in the bed oh. as, and i was getting excited because it's like is he gonna oh no he's just gonna lock her in the room <laughs> he locks her in the room and then him and jonathan head to go uh go find the professor guy and he pretty much mm-hmm. tells the the um, americans do not let her out do not mm-hmm. leave this post they fucked that up anyways, mm-hmm. but yep. yeah. all for, all and for then, a shot of bourbon. Yeah. And a bourbon chaser. Which I don't understand. We're, well, didn't we just figure out the liquor was turning into blood? Like, why are we trying to go back down there? <laughs> Get me some very... Mm, Give me O negative light. Watered down bourbon sans blood. <laughs> <laughs> that is not a cocktail I want. No. no. This is when we see the the British guy who is on the American side piecing out with the Book of the Dead and his canister of organs. Yeah. <laughs> he's out. And then he's literally right. out. <laughs> <laughs> so this scene, Benny is like looking for something. The way Rick throws that the chair. The chair. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> I could use a Beyonce fan right now to cool me down. <laughs> like, like it was nothing and Benny folds 
like a so deck good. of cards. Yep. <laughs> Oh, it's so Just good. watch that scene on repeat. Just <laughs> <wah>. <laughs> and Benny kind of he reveals his his end game is <laughs> as long as I serve him, I'm immune. So peace. And I mean, survival um, of the uh, the fittest, <laughs> but also zero backbone. Yes, yeah, survival of yeah, the weasels, whatsoever. pretty much. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Oh no, Imhotep needs the book and Evie and then Benny is out a window. <laughs> <laughs> um, then we see Imhotep claim his second victim and he gets the book of the dead. So the British guy running down the street. Yep. Not long for this world. And then he he's looking more human, less yeah. mummy and he vomits flies. As gross. one does. <laughs> there there's lots of wind gusts in this movie yeah. to show that um, emotep is nearby <laughs> or something supernatural is about to happen emotep gets his third victim he's almost whole except he has like a hole in his cheek and a scarab crawls into it and then he eats it which it makes sense. good CGI. It, that I was very impressed with. And they said that like, that was the hardest thing. And him explaining it now, like, yeah, they had to put all these things on my face. I'm like, now it's like standard practice in almost yeah. every movie. You have yeah. to wear the suits and stuff. But it was interesting, his commentary on how they had to do that. Arnold Vosloo had to shave his body two times a day. Oh, Damn. gosh. To stay... Did, like some like nair thing <laughs> yeah know. he hated the process he was not a fan oh we then find out imatep can also turn himself into sand yeah mark. and then my comment is how can evie sleep at a time like this yeah she passed the fuck out she and wasn't she pacing or waiting so delicately no <laughs> one no one sleeps like that there is not a crinkle in her mm-hmm. sheets, she's lying perfectly on her pillows, like hmm. <laughs> no one who is being chased by a mummy and bringing upon plagues sleeps that pretty. Nope. And nope. then Imhotep kisses her. Yay, more non-consensual kisses. <sighs> so Aren't wonderful. they the best? The best. <laughs> Especially and then- ones that wear at someone's flesh. Yes. That oh, was gross. Uh. <laughs> And then Rick comes in, cats blazing. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, it works. Imhotep's like, peace them out. I'll be hey, back allergies. for you, babe. <laughs> yeah. How does Evie realize they need to find the gold book? Um, I, I think she she's aware because she that's okay. what she was going to find in the beginning. Yes. She was going to find the book of Anuman Ra, which is the golden book of the living. But when they were at Hamanopter, they found the book of the dead instead. So in when they everybody gather, uh, those who are still alive gather, <laughs> they head over to the Museum of Antiquities and she's reading not like a Rosetta Stone, but some type of slab that they have. Yes. And she realizes that they got the the locations mixed up. So the Bembridge scholars had said that the Golden Book of Anman Ra was under the statue of Anubis. That's not true because the Book of the Dead was in uh, the statue of Anubis. So they're trying to like decipher, well, if that's wrong, then it has to be this. And then we get the line, take that, Bembridge scholar. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so good. And so she deciphers that the golden book is in the statue of Horus. And so they have to go back to Hamanoptera. But I have a question. Why would the golden book of the living be at the feet of the statue of Anubis if he is the god of the dead? I think it was just stupid people who <laughs> figured it, who did Like no one questioned, it. like yeah. none of the Benbridge scholars questioned, like, they're, they're all proud to be like oh yes it has to be this oh, good <laughs> <girl."> <laughs> <laughs> like, 
Like, no, let's continue to reject another woman's application into our society. <laughs> That's how I imagine that they talk. Like, I, I, same. You did a very good, you pulled it right out of my brain. <laughs> yeah, I could feel the mutton chops growing. Yes. <laughs> At this time, another plague, there is a zombie mob of boils and sores. Gross. Or, who have boils and sores all over their face, chanting. <laughs> oh, you're shit. like, gross. <laughs> Which the mummy ride first opened at universal there were very long lines and so people would just stand in line and chant imhotep like the, <laughs> the boils and sores yes. imhotep slaves <laughs> i love it jonathan for all the bumbling he does <laughs> he's quick with a plan because he realizes he's in a sticky situation and yeah. so he pretends to be a zombie and starts chanting <laughs> and walking really slow to get out of slave mob and is able to get away rick has procured a car to start trekking back to hominoptera i thought it and- was um jonathan who got the car was it Jonathan? Yeah, it was yeah. Jonathan. Okay. The car. That's why you ran outside. Oh. Yeah. That car is on display at Universal Studios Hollywood. Oh. Like they actually have it out that you can take a picture with it. Oh, that's it's a cool. nice car too. Rick gives zero fucks and is like, I'm <laughs> driving through this mob. So there's just people bouncing off the hood. Yeah, he just <laughs> sticks his foot on the gas while well, Jonathan's going too slow. He's like, we we running these motherfuckers yes. over. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto Cairo. Yes. yes. <laughs> Imhotep is now fully regenerated. Evie turns to Rick and says, if he turns me into a mummy, you're the first one I'm coming after. (laughs) (laughs) And And when she's going with Imhotep, the way that he's going after her, Mm -hmm. it's so, oh, it's so sweet. And I also noticed in the movie, Jonathan will call Evie, Evie, but he won't. Yes. Rick continues to call her Evelyn. Yes. Uh, And I don't know why, but that is so cute to me. It's so sexy. (laughs) <laughs> because your brother calls you your childhood nickname mm-hmm. yo man gonna call you by your adult name yeah mm-hmm. he is yes benny also takes the key from jonathan then they need a diversion so Terrence sacrifices himself to the angry mob yeah r.a.p Terrence bay by Terrence Bay. You were anything but subtle, but. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next scene is we are now in the middle of the desert. Somehow they have found the uh, dad from Tarzan. Yeah. Out listening to like a phonograph with his airplane. Just chilling. Winston. Winston. <laughs> yeah. So they're like, hey, you got a plane. You want to take us somewhere? And he's like, kill me now. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> How did they all get in that plane? I, I was like, wait, all of them are in that plane? No, the, uh, Jonathan and the Artis, they are on the way. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan is terrified. Artis is having the time of his life. He is. <laughs> so, like, he's like a little kid. He is just so joyful to be uh, strapped to the wing of an airplane. <laughs> that carries on in the second movie because they're fighting all of these mummies. And at the end, Ardith is just like, this was my first bus ride. <laughs> so cute. He's so precious. <laughs> Emotep, he travels by sand and he travels whoever is in his party with him just in kind of like a sand tornado. That can't so, be comfortable. Emotep oh. air. <laughs> when we fly you fly <laughs> and so just... benny and evie are kind of just drops from like 20 feet out of the air and the emotep uses a sand attack to take down the plane it's and super then... effective <laughs> and then the sand face eats the plane but then evie and princess jasmine style kisses emotep to distract him it is princess jasmine (laughs) style (gasps) you're so right oh my gosh i never thought of that before somehow there's quicksand yeah when the plane crashes they're all able to get out they realize that conveniently quicksand and a very fond farewell to winston thank you for your service poor thing but he, he died. He, he was wanted. so happy. His face, he had a smile and everything. Yeah. 
How does Jonathan get the scarab in him? They make it to Hamanoptera. They're looking for the Book of Unmun Ra. And, you know, he gets bored. So he goes off like the warden does. He was like, oh, look at this. This is shiny. Mm. <laughs> and it right in the skin. And Lindley is terrified for years. <laughs> <laughs> the way that Rick cuts that thing out of him was just... Every- <laughs> everything in this movie that rick does is just like this shouldn't this shouldn't be <laughs> this, should, I, this is not blood, there should why. be a bunch of blood spattering and like how painful would that like the way he just went, like what effortlessly uh that's okay but somehow <laughs> okay it works yeah i was <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I because I couldn't remember. I was like, no, Jonathan still had an arm in the next movie. <laughs> Someone was like, else like loses an arm in this movie. Yes. It's not Jonathan. <laughs> so Emotep is down in the chamber in which yeah, he he was put in the sarcophagus with the dementor pools. And <laughs> He has Evie on the altar next to the mummy of Anax Namun and is starting the ritual to bring Anax Namun back from the dead. So he opens the organ things and blows the dust to bring the priests back. Uh, yeah, I never <laughs> thought of that. Like, those are the jars that he needs for organs. Yeah. How is that suddenly magic dust? <laughs> so Rick, Jonathan, and Ardeth are trying to make their way to Evie. And so she hears a gunshot. So she, she knows she knows like, they're coming. My man is here. The way she got excited. I- Imhotep sends his army of undead priests to take care of Rick and the gang. They find a room and set up the mirrors again, just like Evie taught them. It is a room full of gold. Oh, <laughs> so beautiful. It's like reminiscent of the Goonies. Yes. A little bit, yeah. An undead army starts coming out of the ground because they just travel by ground. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so Jonathan finds Horace. Then Rick strikes a match off of Artis's face. <laughs> Artis like, was into it. He, <laughs> he was. He was, was like, like, what? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> What is this feeling so sudden and new? <laughs> Ardeth was taken by Rick as well. Yes. Everybody in this movie is. <laughs> and so then they just start blowing shit up with dynamite. Yeah. As you do. Because men. men. Yeah. <laughs> Benny is like, hey, look at this room full of shiny shit. Let me pack bags. <laughs> So Benny is like trekking bags out to his camel. Apparently when Benny is shown putting all of his bags of gold on the camel and Benny pulls on the camel by the reins and the camel doesn't move, it's because the camels, all of them, for some reason, hated the actor Kevin J. (laughs) (laughs) O'Connor. Why? What did did Kevin do to those camels? He might be... (laughs) So they blast their way into the sacrificial room. The black fog is starting to come back because the Imhotep is going, yes, the dementors <laughs> are coming out to bring the soul of Anox in the moon back as Imhotep goes through his, his ritual. So the mummy wakes up, the mummy reanimates and she's pissed. <laughs> <laughs> It took um, you this long? Right? <laughs> 3,000 years. <laughs> and such a crick in the neck. <laughs> Again, I'm so glad. all comes back to Aladdin. <laughs> I'm so glad you went with me on that journey. <laughs> it, it gets very chaotic at this point. Jonathan interrupts and distracts. And Evie says, the key is inside the robe of Emotep. You need to get it so you can un- unlock the book and start reading how to put him back. Then Rick finds the sword. Rick wielding a sword. Okay, in my book. <laughs> Rick's Funko Pop is holding that sword and it makes oh, me so happy. <laughs> nice. So happy. Evie's still strapped to the altar. And Rick's kind of keeping the army of the undead away from her. And away from him, Jonathan is reading out loud. 
must be a family trait. trait. (laughs) (laughs) And accidentally wakes all the the pharaoh's army. Right. And but they're kind of just they're waiting for orders. Right. And so a knocks in the moon starts like ordering them to do stuff. And Evie's like, you actually have control of them. You have to figure out how to like give them commands. Yeah. Cause they're so, all fighting Rick at this point. Yeah. Yes. She's like, finish the damn take like finish reading it. <laughs> yeah. So you get the power of them. <laughs> a knocks in the moon is now fighting with Evie mm-hmm. in one corner. Uh, this is when Rick roars at the mummies for the second time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And like their mouths, like he roars and then their mouths just go roar. That's <laughs> yes. like, there's no That's jaw. he gets the heck out of Dodge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, that didn't work as planned. Uh-uh. <laughs> and then there's lots of fighting. Jonathan can't figure out one symbol. He says, it looks like a stork. And just in time, Jonathan gets the incantation, all the hieroglyphics deciphered and Rick is literally on the ground surrounded and Jonathan has the power. <laughs> that power. So then the mummy army takes care of a Nox and a moon. And so Evie doesn't have to fight that fight anymore. The really weird scene where Rick cuts Imhotep's arm off. And he's, he's not like phased at all. Yeah. He no. just turns around with the dub. He's like, <laughs> oh, it's gone. And it just like, Picks it up, screws it back on, keeps going. But because Emotep's arm came off, his robe fell off. And so Jonathan's like, uh-huh, key in robe, now on four. And so Jonathan <laughs> gets the key, is able to open the book. Evie is now able to help him read the book. And this is when Emotep unhinges his jaw is the only note I have. <laughs> Apparently, it Imhotep's jawbones did not no regenerate. No. <laughs> so Evie is able to recite the incantation from the Gold Book of the Living, and and I love that in the scene, like Imhotep has him by the throat, and you can legitimately see, like they yeah. made Rick's face, they CGI'd him turning mm-hmm. blue. Well, you yes. can hear like the cracking too. I was like, is he gonna oh. survive this? Oh wait, Rick is in the next movie, right? Like I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm invested. I'm concerned. <laughs> a undead chariot dementor wispy thing comes that's, and... that's anubis the, the person oh, driving the carriage is anubis got it. okay chariot of anubis comes and whisks emotep's soul away yes but emotep is still physically there and moving because he's now just mortal. Like Correct. all the supernatural parts got whisked away to somewhere. <laughs> yeah. The underworld. Yeah. The underworld. <laughs> and so Rick's like, mm, I got the sword. Stabby, stabby. <laughs> <laughs> and then Umotep falls in the Dementor pit and they pull him down. <laughs> and it's not so much as a fall. He just walks back like, oh, yeah. no, how did <laughs> I get here? Oh, no. I really feel like they didn't invest in stunt doubles in this movie. Cause no. they, like, they, the, the budget was on CGI. <laughs> and it was CGI very- and bugs. <laughs> And it was very Terminator as his face like <gasps> slowly goes under the yeah. dementor. <laughs> Can you imagine if Imhotep just went ter- like put his thumb up as he's down? <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Benny is still grabbing everything he can from the room of gold and he needs a little rest because he's tired. And so he sets his... <laughs> stack of gold stuff on was- this <laughs> random lever sticking out obviously he's this isn't seen- suspicious at all <laughs> it was like the tire jack of the pyramid or wherever it so it's like if you he pushed down on it now it's just collapsing <laughs> <Everything's> <laughs> <going with it. laughs> who, who made that design be like 
I know what this, I know what hominopter needs. We need a lever, but in a very inconvenient place that if anyone so much as puts a little bit of weight on this lever, the whole city will be destroyed. Yes. Why would we build it? Don't question my genius. We need it. You know why. <laughs> you know why. You know there might why. be some white people coming in here <laughs> yeah. centuries later. Talking which shit they should. Exactly. <laughs> very a la indiana jones everything starts sinking so they're running out skirting under giant doors and evie is very upset because uh the book is lost <laughs> to john and so wrong with the goddamn book you have one job one you job have one damn job and it's not even like a small item that i can Mm-mm. see falling that thing heavy come on jonathan <laughs> I love all the things like you've got Jonathan worried about the gold. Yes. Maybe that's like the book. <laughs> and Rick's like, the book. Rick's like, I'm trying to live today. <laughs> Y'all got to move. You could tell Evie was going to go try to get that mm. book. And Rick looked at her like make room to mentors. <laughs> I just went through hell to try to save your ass. You better come. <laughs> Jesus. Rick is a good guy. He's trying to help Benny. Unfortunately, Benny gets what's coming to him. Too slow. Oh no. Oh Benny, no. no. We love you. That, we love the actor. But oh no, Benny. <laughs> <laughs> We're just, so sad. At first I was like, oh, he's just gonna get trapped in here and then he'll just oh, no. die without air or food or whatever. Yeah. Which is terrifying enough but no but the scarabs come this not only do the scarabs come he's holding a torch which quickly goes out which means there's no oxygen so you're suffocating and being alive at the same time and they eat oh. you slow too they <laughs> don't eat you all at once apparently scarabs see. like leftovers yeah <laughs> he had to do that scene where the torch slowly goes out he actually controlled the torch and slowly like turned it down until it <gasps> that's cool yeah <laughs> that's cool. movie magic ladies and gentlemen practical effects mm. there it is <laughs> then we see our death thanking rick and evie they're very grateful i don't know why i, I mean like, i guess they're off the hook now <laughs> like, like thank you for saving the day it, you you caused all this but thank you <laughs> I just and love now when I, I don't have a mission in life <laughs> oh, no. well he still has to prevent like you never know he's still got to prevent other they're shit really I'm bad sure. at the, their job because they bring Emma back twice <laughs> yeah <laughs> one movie and then they bring it back in the second movie so <laughs> artist he, this might be a sign to be like artist listen Look uh-huh. at your life. Look at your choices. Maybe you should go back to college. They kind of just, okay, well, there's that. Let's get on our camels and figure <laughs> out what's next. But uh, Evie's on Rick's lap on the camel and they kissed and they nose nuzzled. And Aww. it's so it's precious. precious. <laughs> oh, <gosh>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it hurts. It's so, much. so sweet. The whole <laughs> thing is so sweet. <laughs> Rick and Evie forever. <laughs> they're, they're just, they're, they're, they're in game. Rick and Evie yeah. are in game. <laughs> they're a good couple. I really did like them. And they're both actors just have all that. A lot of the actors, like even Jonathan, they just have so much charisma. The guy who mm-hmm. plays Jonathan, yeah. I pretty much love him and everything else he's in as well. I, I very much love them. The last thing that you see that they kind of zero in on is all of Benny's gold on the camel. So they reach. That's how they got that nice house that they have. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I love it. I love it. Sorry. (laughs) And that is the mummy <laughs> yay <laughs> other interesting facts we didn't cover they couldn't film in egypt because of, of turmoil in the region and so the moroccan region of the sahara desert was ultimately deemed a suitable substitute and that's where the bulk of the external shots of the first two movies were shot 
and all of the gunfire is CGI due to sand gumming up the works. Oh, because even though there was, you know, unrest in Egypt, Morocco wasn't absent of unrest, but they had complete support of the Moroccan mm-hmm. military. So they actually were helping them and protecting them during shooting as well. Yes. Gotcha. And then other actors considered Ben Affleck, Brad Pitt, Tom Cruise, Matthew McConaughey, Sylvester Stallone, and Leonardo DiCaprio. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Sylvester Stallone? (laughs) Are we talking about for Rick? Sly, baby. Yo, All yo. of those make sense, except for Sylvester (laughs) Stallone. (laughs) Yeah. Yo, Evelyn. (laughs) <laughs> oh god <laughs> oh. <laughs> and leonardo dicaprio really wanted to do it but he had already committed to the beach he actually asked to push shooting of the beach back they said no and so brendan fraser was cast and then the beach got delayed anyway so leo could oh. have done it but I'm sure he, that's probably one he, that hurts for real. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, I'm and not mad. Le- no. <laughs> <laughs> Additionally, the opening voiceover was originally intended to be read by Imhotep, but director Steven Summers later realized that Imhotep wouldn't have been able to speak English and gave the voiceover to Ardeth Bay instead. Oh. And then lastly, a cloak lent by a British costume rental company worn by an extra in this film was discovered to have been made for Alec Guinness when he portrayed (gasps) Obi-Wan Kenobi in Star Wars A New Hope. What? Okay, ladies. (laughs) Present day readings. Lindley? I I still hold this movie so near and dear to my heart. It's, it's one that not only does it have good memories for me, like from watching it back in the day, but it still holds up. Like you could show this to someone nowadays that had never seen it back in the nineties and they would still have a fun time. And that's what this movie is. It's a fun time. I am going to knock off points by something uh, Danielle said earlier about the representation in the movie. Mm -hmm. So I think I don't know if you have half scores, but I, I'm going to do a 4.5. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do a, a you would do rent it a again, five, it could be would a rent again, but acknowledges the problems with the movie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jackie? I, same, other than what is a very common theme in most movies, lack of representation and Uh, lack of consent in some scenes every single movie we've done I've been able to really find things that are just like that doesn't make sense or kind of pick at it in a very loving way but as I was watching this movie I'm like there's really nothing there is nothing here that I question other than the Bainbridge scholars getting the books wrong (laughs) like there is nothing here that I can really say what what's going on it's just it's that good I love it so much and even though it's not something that's on heavy rotation in my life now it was just like it was a warm hug (laughs) like watching it it was just like yes I remember exactly how this made me feel when I first watched it and it still makes me feel that way so I would still would buy it again it's still other than those things that are fairly common in the in most movies that we we watch I love this movie (laughs) (laughs) for me it's still a five-day rental I'm not gonna buy it Mm -hmm. but I think if I'm scrolling through tv and it's on I'll probably watch and laugh and I after this episode of doing it with you guys I probably have even more warm memories about it because clearly I didn't remember when I saw it the first time. <laughs> We've done um, our job. <laughs> we have. <laughs> I, you know, I do like, it's so weird. Cause I, I don't always have like the worst memory about everything. It's just, I feel like my, my brain just tries to make room for stuff, but it's like inside out. You just have those little guys that are like dumping old memories. And they're <laughs> like, Oh, the mummy. Mm, don't we need don't it. need it. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I enjoyed it. I really did. And yes, there are some cultural appropriation weird Mm -hmm. shit that happens in this movie that I always call out because Mm -hmm. that's what I do but other than that I think it was a pretty solid movie and I really did like how they treated the female protagonist in it and how much meat and potatoes they gave that character yeah Yeah. and she was and she's never like overly sexualized either no like I did a really good job they did other than the see-through nightgown, but that was but just they unfortunate. They true. <laughs> they yeah. could have just left that and be like, whoa, Ooh. look at that. All you teenage <laughs> I, boys in the audience. Whoa. I see some nip slips. <laughs> we didn't see any boobies, but we did see penis if you look close enough. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why this The Mummy is truly a feminist film. <laughs> Well, Lindley, we are so happy you joined us. We had so much fun. I think our audience definitely is having fun listening. (laughs) You are more than welcome to come Mm -hmm. back and join us and join in the renaissance. Yeah. (laughs) Why don't you tell everybody how to find you so they can follow along with your adventures and your cosplay and just your love of Brendan? Sure. Uh, Well, thank you for having me. I've had such a fun time. I love talking about this movie and this has been so fun. Uh, But you can find me on Instagram at Little Lottie. That's L-O-T-T-I-E. I'm on TikTok at Little Lottie Cosplay. I also have a Facebook uh, cosplay page, which is Little Lottie Cosplay. I'm on Twitter. Uh, not really on Twitter. I have a Twitter, (laughs) but I I have a Twitter and that's Little Lottie 91. Nice. And as always, please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and continue to listen along with our wonderful podcast here. We really appreciate everybody's positivity, your feedback. And if you have any questions or you want to be featured on an episode, please give us a call on our wonderful hotline for our quick drop segment. The number is 909-601-NMLF, 909-601-6653. And we actually have people who have called into the quick drop. And so we're going to let them take it away. Hey, sisters, Danielle. This is Heather. I was just calling to let you know I just listened to the uh, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back podcast with Marky. Loved it. Laughed all the way through as usual. But... Thought I needed to call in and let you know that it's orangutan, not orangutan. And then it rhymes. It's the Suzanne, the orangutan. So, you know, that's just my tidbit, my especiality. <laughs> Love you guys. Keep it up. Bye. Thank you so much for those who have called in. We hope that you continue to call in with anything. We had corrections, suggestions thoughts on movies. We just love to hear from you. We get really excited. And if you're international and you can't use our Google voice number on our anchor page, you can be able to leave us a voice message there as well. And as usual, please, you can tweet to us, DM us, pigeon. We will be very excited to hear your feedback. And also we have a Patreon page. So if you want to help support this podcast and keep us going, (laughs) get bonus clips. Here's some more information about Jackie and I's friendship and our guests. Please head to our Patreon page and, you know, become a new Patreon bestie. And as always, be kind and rewind.